should have been rock bottom. That's what I would have chosen. <laughs> um, but the upside is that if someone's up to no good in business or government, it's getting harder and harder for them to hide it. And this is true north as well as south of the equator. Isn't it extraordinary that the two parties who are the most important in the transaction that we call development assistance, i.e. aid, the two most important parties, the taxpayer who give the money and the people who benefit from the money, are the two people who know the least about it, or the two parties who know the least about it. That's mad. I know Raj thinks that, and it's gonna change. Biggest argument we always hear against development assistance, aid, which remember is a tiny fraction of the federal budget, less than 1%, is that it's efficient. A bureaucracy gets in the way, and kleptocrats run off with it. But now everyone can see what's happening. The trajectory of information technology is, strangely enough, more information. African citizens are holding their governments and companies to account. In Uganda, there's, they're monitoring elections with mobile phones and cameras. In Kenya, they're using websites like ipaidabribe.ke. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, to expose officials who, who, who are on the take. East Africa, there's an initiative citizens started called Twaweza, which literally means, yes, we can, in Swahili. Who knew? Um, <laughs> Anyway, these, these are, they're opening the books on government spending. They want to see. Transparency is driving down uh, pharmaceutical prices. It's, it's, it's even starting to transform the extractive industries. Some people here know what I'm talking about. Oil and mining. This is big because there's a lot of wealth in natural resources down under the ground in these developing countries. And this open data can help get that wealth above ground to benefit the people who live over it. Anyway, all of this I'm describing as a start. I'm, I'm not even mentioning banking by phone or, or, or pricing information for farmers, but here's the catch, and it's, it's, it's an obvious one. Technology doesn't accomplish this on its own. You can't just drop a cell phone in, a, in, in, a, in the desert and create an oasis. There's no app for that uh, yet. Uh, the crucial element is still the human element. It's individual citizens numbering in the millions and determined to stir things up. It's the human element that got us to a moment where an extra 50 million African children are going to school today because people in America and other countries got out and marched for debt cancellation. Same goes for the 6.2 million Africans now getting life-saving AIDS drugs because people in the US were willing to stand up and shout and pay for that. Those and other victories took not phones in the hand, but boots on the ground, the boots of everyday activists in every town and city and on college campuses like Georgetown. That's really what moves the dial, social movement, social enterprise, because when people get busy and get organized, get out there, real change happens, global change. It's a simple equation, outside pressure, inside movement. It's a story of one where a social enterprise like RED, the idea, RED is like the gateway drug um, to one. If you haven't the time to put on the marching boots and just go buy some RED shit. Um, <laughs> um, Deborah Duggan's here somewhere, she rocks, um, runs the show. But you know, the idea that there's a movement out there when myself or Bill Gates is going in to lobby a president or prime minister to try and get them to keep their commitments to the poorest of the poor, that politician is hearing it from thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who agree with us. And it's harder to ignore them than it is to ignore me, as, per as persuasive as I like to think I am. Ask the congressman who thought it would look good on him, he shall remain nameless. Picking a fight with one, he tried to block an important bill and said on the radio he didn't think his constituents thought it important. He's bombarded by emails and petitions, and then, really dirty trick, they were waiting for him when he came out of his church on Sunday. He threw his hands up in the air. I had no idea you people felt so strongly. I'm so sorry, I now support the bill. That's what we do. Um, and then, of course, there's the politicians that you don't have to lobby. 
I just want to stand up and I want to make a major shout out for leader Nancy Pelosi and Senators Pat Leahy and Norm Coleman. Where is Norm Coleman? All of whom, all of whom, not just great leadership, real deep personal commitment. Uh, and, and we shouldn't just thank them, we should, we should shout their names across the land. And I actually, uh, I do not, I can't even consider the number of lives that have been transformed and saved by these people. And it must be millions. And people are alive because these people exist. Jean Sperling is here tonight. Raj Shah is here tonight. These people are heroes to me. This is civic duty with the global citizen in mind. And actually, you know, if George Bush was here, and I know his uh, daughter Barbara's here, I, I, would, I would get Matt Damon to kiss him on the lips. <laughs> and I would give him a more sort of Irish macho kind of handshake thing. And, um, you know, it's incredible. It's incredible what, 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 you know, George Bush, President Bush's name is, is, is in the history books. His name is in the front forward of a book that's written on the end of AIDS. Greatest health crisis in 600 years. Both sides working. If Bill Clinton was here at his alma mater, well, I just get him to make the speech, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just get, you know, the secretary of explaining stuff, because he, he is just more of a rock star than I'll ever be. <laughs> I just want to thank Bono here. <laughs> I want to thank Bono here. I want to thank Bono for stepping away from the microphone. I, I knew he couldn't rhyme, but I, I'm so glad he can fall back on adding and subtracting. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> I mean, the one campaign, it might be the one thing all of us can agree on. <laughs> Dude. Uh, and all of this happens without social media. Can you imagine what you can accomplish, turbocharged? The power of these tools, the power of technology is that leverage that they give us, if we're willing to use it. I think we are. I, I know we are. I know you are. Whether you join one or, or, or buy Red or join an NGO that we work alongside, we need you engaged in this fight. It's, it's the defining struggle of our age. And it's, it's not just aid, which is getting smarter and smarter. It's trade, it's investment, social enterprise. It's working with the citizenry to help unlock their own domestic resources so they can do it for themselves. Think anyone in Africa likes aid? Come on. Think anyone in Ireland likes aid? Germany, rebuilt after the Second World War. You'll take it, though. Anyway, it's not a right-left issue. It's a right-wrong issue. And America has constantly been on the side of what's right. Because when it comes down to it, this is about keeping faith with the idea of America. Because America is an idea, isn't it? I mean, Ireland's a great country, but it's not an idea. Great Britain's a great country. It's not an idea. That's how we see you around the world, as one of the greatest ideas in human history, right up there with the Renaissance, right up there with crop rotation on the Beatles' White Album. <laughs> the idea, the American idea, it's an idea. The idea is that you and me are created equal. It will ensure that an economic recession need not become an equality recession. The idea that life is not meant to be endured but enjoyed. The idea that if we have dignity, if we have justice, then leave it to us, we'll do the rest. This country was the first to claw its way out of darkness and put that on paper. And God love you for it, because there aren't, these aren't just American ideas anymore. There's no copyright on them. You brought them into the world 
It's a wide world now. I know Americans say they have a bit of the world in them, and you do, the family tree has lots of branches. But the thing is, the world has a bit of America in it too. These truths, your truths, they're self-evident in us. So those people I've been talking about today, the poor, they're not those people. They're not them. They're us. They're you. They may be separated from you know, oceans and, and circumstance, but as they dream as you dream, they value what you value. There is no them, only us. The American anthem is not exceptionalism. It's universalism. There is no them, only us. Ubuntu, I am because we are. There is no them, only us. Now the Jesuits, they know something about this, the largeness of spirit, this expanded sense, enlightened sense of, of, of who is your neighbor. I'm not a Jesuit. My, my mother was a Protestant and my father a Catholic. He was not of the Jesuit order. Uh, he, was, he was of a whole other order. Uh, <laughs> Um, but here's what I know. I love him, I miss him. Um, but here's what I know about the Jesuits and Ignatius Loyola. He was a soldier, right? And he was lying on a bed, recovering from his wounds, when he had what they call a conversion of the heart. He saw God's work and the call to do God's work, not just in the church, in everything, everywhere the arts, universities, the Orient, the New World. And once he knew about that, he couldn't unknow it. It changed him. It forced him out of bed and into the world. And that's what I'm hoping happens here in Georgetown with you. Because when you truly accept that those children in some far off place in the global village have the same value as you, in God's eyes, or even just in your eyes, then your life is forever changed you see something that you can't unsee. We have a, uh, a sense of it from the words of, of Whale Gonan. I have his words tattooed on my brain, the man who stood in Terrier Square at the start of the 21st century. We are going to win because we don't understand politics. We are going to win because we don't play their dirty games. We're going to win because we don't have a party political agenda. We're going to win because the tears that come from our eyes actually come from our hearts. We're going to win because we have dreams. We're going to win because we are willing to stand up for our dreams. We're going to win because the power of the people is so much stronger than the people in power. Thank you. Thank you very much.